Mohamed Fahmy, the Al Jazeera journalist and former cellmate of Peter Grester, has used his first British television interview to accuse his employers of epic negligence by putting him and his colleagues at risk. His retrial was due to begin in Cairo today, but the case has been adjourned until the 8th of March. I spoke to him earlier tonight and asked him first for his reaction to today's events in court. I call the trial today a circus of a retrial because the witnesses didn't show up, uh, the defendants who are still in custody uh, of the police did not show up, and they didn't bring in the evidence. So uh, it was really uh, frustrating to be back in that court again. But there's no sign as yet that the Egyptian authorities are going to drop this trial? No, no, no. We're not getting any signs that they're going to drop uh, this trial. Uh, actually, we're hearing that they're going to drag it on, and people are very surprised considering that you know, uh, the highest court in Egypt, uh, the appeals court, has already, you know, declared us almost, you know, innocent when they said there was no evidence to, to link us to the Muslim Brotherhood or uh, any, you know, serious investigations. Peter Grester has been let go, but you and Baha Muhammad are still uh, facing trial. What, what is the point of that? What do you think the Egyptian authorities are hoping to achieve? Is this to do with their rivalry with uh, Qatar? Well, I'm very happy for my friend Peter Greste that he's out of this mess, and I know he's going to be our loudest ambassador outside, knowing our plight. However, I mean, Peter benefited from the deportation decree uh, issued by President Sisi uh, to return, um, uh, you know, foreigners back to their hometown, and I was hoping that I would benefit from that same law. Uh, that's why um, I was forced. Uh, pretty much to drop my Egyptian citizenship and I was told by the Canadians and uh, you know my government in Canada said it was imminent that I would be released and the Egyptians said you know you will be released and suddenly uh, things you know took a u-turn and I ended up back in uh, in court yeah I'm just wondering where it would leave you if you were deported because you have got family in Egypt you've got a fiance uh, Marwa and all the rest of it and presumably once you were deported uh, that would mean that they would either have to come with you or you wouldn't be able to see them. Well, Marwa has quit her job already and, you know, we were looking for uh, airplane tickets back to Canada and my family was ready to go back as well. You know, the most important thing for us right now is to gather ourselves as a family and, you know, get out of this crisis first and then we can deal with anything else that comes our way. Uh, this case has been, you know, a, a real uh, crisis for us. And, you know, I'm, I'm blaming more than one party for the situation, not just Egypt. Yeah, I mean, what support are you getting from the company you're working for, from Al Jazeera English? Well, I'm not losing sight of the Egyptian prosecution that has put me in jail. For over a year now, we have been criticizing the Egyptian government for doing so. Yet, uh, I feel and I know that, you know, Al Jazeera's shortcomings and... Uh, the way they dealt with uh, our security situation before the arrest and the, the epic negligence that they portrayed during the trial and, you know, uh, has also given the prosecution more firepower, basically, you know. And uh, I have raised these issues to uh, the company in a constructive manner, hoping that they were, would respond. And, uh, you know, I, I hope they do, because this is not just about me, it's about you know, many journalists in that same situation and the fact that we are still in the case, in, the, in court. So what have Al Jazeera done wrong, in your view, leading to your plight? Well, when I was hired as bureau chief, uh, you know, labor law number one is that you're supposed to tell your staff what kind of dangers they're going to, uh, you know, see. And I'm not talking about the, the dangers me and you face on the ground as journalists. I'm, telling, I'm talking about not providing a safe working environment, no press passes, no licenses to equipment, and opting to challenge the Egyptian government by working from the Marriott. And, you know, Al Jazeera Mubashir, the Arabic arm of the channel, was shut down by a court order. Um, and, you know, Al Jazeera English decided to use the content from Al Jazeera English on Al Jazeera Mubashir, despite the fact that me and my team went totally against that by emails, phone calls, and on many occasions, and they still continue to do that, even up to leading to our arrest after the Muslim Brotherhood were declared a terrorist organization. And that basically put us on the radar of the security uh, officials. And, you know, it was very hard for me to contest that when the prosecutor actually showed me the footage on the internet, you know, I said, well, I have emails here that says I'm warning the company not to do so, 
and I'm telling them not to do so, and they're still continuing to do so. So that's not acceptable, and I would like Al Jazeera to be accountable for that. And because, you know, at the moment I'm paying a very hefty price. I, I have paid the majority of my uh, legal fees. They have paid 7% of my legal fees as a reimbursement. And then they sent an email saying, we are not going to reimburse you for any of your legal fees. That is because I chose lawyers that were you know, closer to the government that could push down doors and go to the prosecutor and go to the, the government and try to figure out this case because it's a political case. I'm very thankful to Al Jazeera in terms of the free AJ staff campaign that they had initiated and I'm f thankful to our supporters and I want to make something very clear here, you know, that this case is about freedom of the press, your infringement of uh, press freedom by jailing three innocent, respected journalists. However, there is also a political aspect to the case that has been ignored. I suppose somebody might say, well, by criticizing Al Jazeera and the Qataris now, you are currying favor with the Egyptian authorities. It's very simple. What I'm saying right now does not affect our prosecution in court. Our prosecution in court is that we are members of the Muslim Brotherhood, that we fabricated news, and that there's no evidence of that. However, because there's a score settling between the two countries, like I said, by this negligence, they gave them more firepower. For one year, I've written articles from prison, you know, criticizing the Egyptian government and the prosecution. I will continue to do so for the rest of my life. Mr. Farmi, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. We hope that uh, this ordeal is soon over for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ram. In a statement sent to Sky News this evening, Al Jazeera said, We take the safety of our journalists more seriously than anything else. Our actions are guided by this and decisions are always taken in consultation with our in-country teams. Everything can be scrutinized in hindsight, but the fact is that Mohammed Fahmy was implementing our operations on the ground and was happy to do so. He could have stopped work at any time if he had concerns.